Ever since the release of the Metaphor Re Fantasio demo last week, I cannot stop thinking about one thing, and that is, what is the Elder Tribe, and why are they so reviled by the church? And so, as I was thinking about it, replaying through the demo, seeing how everyone treats the protagonist, it got me thinking, what could the Sanctus Church, people like Sanctifex Forden and everyone underneath of him, be so scared of from the Elder Tribe? What is this heretical magic that poses such a threat to the church's existence that they would condemn and, in large part, it sounds like, kill off a large number of the already rare Elder Tribe? And then it kind of hit me. In Metaphor Re Fantasio, we as the player are a character in the game. We are connected to the protagonist, right? So we are introduced to this world by more, and we're chatting with him, we share our name, and then we are the ones on looking and kind of guiding the events of the story from afar, or at least that's kind of how it's presented to us. What if the magic of the Elder Tribe is having that predisposition to be able to connect with the real world, whether if in metaphor it is actually a utopia, or if it will eventually be revealed that it is more like the real world is today, and much more similar than one might think to the world of metaphor, you know, the United Kingdom of Ukronia. And so how this magic I think could work is we see that the protagonist is heterochromic, meaning he has two differently colored eyes. And Atlas has a tendency to love pulling from other cultures, other religions as inspiration for their games, as is referenced by Persona, Shin Megami Tensei, Soul Hackers, so on and so forth. In Native American culture, there's this idea that heterochromia is something called ghost eyes, meaning that an individual can see heaven and earth at the same time. So, what if in the world of metaphor, the Elder Tribe are able to maybe not see heaven and earth at the same time necessarily, but they are able to see our world and their world and be able to kind of commune with both to some extent. If this is the case, then that would explain why on the Metaphor Re Fantasio Japanese website, there are pictures of Tokyo Tower in the background and just pictures of what appears to be Tokyo in general in the background. Is it possible that these are just references to Moore's book that the protagonist is carrying around with him? Sure, I guess technically that could be the case. I don't think it's that simple though. I think that the Elder Tribe are the only ones with the ability to commune with both worlds and see truly past the status quo of the world that they are living in now. We know that the Sanctus Church, even just by talking with passers-by in Grand Trad, that the church is in control of the show right now, and some of the citizens have even said that the church has had the king under their thumb for a while now, and the church is who actually runs the nation. So, if there's a power that is able to create a better world, maybe one that isn't fully run by the church, a church probably wouldn't like that too much because they want to be able to have control over the citizenry. Just based off of my initial impressions of what the church is teaching at this time, a lot of people thinking that Sanctifex Forden would be a front runner for being king and that he would be the next logical choice. And so that split the country up between should Luis be the next king or should Sanctifex Forden? Should there be military might leading the country or should the church be leading the country? And that seems to be at the get-go what the main kind of crux of of this conversation looks like. Throw in though that black sheep from the Elder Tribe. Throw in the protagonist and we are probably the only ones who can disrupt this race. The developers have mentioned in the past that imagination in this game is the source of magic and so if the Elder Tribe are more predisposed to be able to actualize their imagination and utilize that magic, then they would be a force to be reckoned with and they should be squashed by the people who are feeling very good in power right now. The Elder Tribe are really the only ones in the world that don't have these 
fantastical fantasy traits. They don't have the horns of the Clemmer tribe, or the ears of the Rusant tribe, or the eyes of the Nydia tribe, and they're not beastmen like the Parapus tribe. They just look like people from the real world that we are used to, and like the protagonist, might have heterochromic eyes. Though, even though we might want to attribute that heterochromia to the Elder tribe, we can't do that with full certainty because the memorandum says that the Elder tribe has no distinguishing features like the rest of the tribes in the world of metaphor. And so it could very well be something latent within all of the members of the Elder Tribe that could awaken to, or maybe it's just a once in a generation kind of thing. And the one chosen individual from the Elder Tribe will be able to awaken to this, this ghost vision, this ability to see both their world and our world. And the rest of the Elder Tribe may not necessarily have those exceptional magical abilities and instead it's just the fear that one child could come from this tribe to upset the balance of the world but that could be why the church is so afraid of the elder tribe not because every single member of the elder tribe poses a distinct threat to them but because when there is that one child of the Elder Tribe that comes along to upset the order of things, they know that that is going to completely turn their world upside down. So if they can get rid of that child as soon as possible, then by all means, they will want to do that. You could even consider this kind of a, a Christ allegory, right? Where in biblical times, the king sent troops to kill all of the newborn children because he had been told that Christ would come and become the king of kings. What if they are taking from that idea and the protagonist of this story is meant to become the quote unquote king of kings and that's why they persecute the Elder Tribe because they don't want that new upstart who is meant to be king someday to take over the throne. But those are just kind of my ideas on it. Let me know if you think that this theory holds any weight. Let me know if you think it is absolutely ludicrous and i'd love to hear all of your comments and all of your theories in the comment section down below and as always if you like this kind of content you want to see more metaphor content coming from the channel make sure to like the video subscribe and why even ring that notification bell and i have a new podcast coming out soon with my wife called the bit by bit game club where the idea behind it is it's a book club but for video games so we will be going through games level by level piece by piece and you know bit by bit and the first game that we are going to be playing is Kingdom Hearts. So if that's something that interests you, here's a little bit of a preview. He's like, I just want to be captain, huh? And <laughs> is Sora Mickey Mouse now? <laughs> He's channeling the king. And <laughs> Donald Duck jump scare immediately. We're going right into it. He appears on the screen. I'm terrified. He, he kills chocobos. He just <laughs> got done with his ritual sacrifice from his personal chocobo farm, the last one in the galaxy. Oh, man. And your first reaction to being confronted with combat. <laughs> oh, what did I say? <laughs> you go, uh-oh. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> So if that's something that you want to check out, then please, you know, subscribe to us over on the Bit by Bit Game Club YouTube channel, follow us on TikTok, or follow me on Twitter if you want to get updates just in general. But as always, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, a fantastic rest of your week, and why not even a fantastic rest of your month, and I will see you in the next video. Later.